But now, uh, really quickly, we did both go to New Trier. We went to the same high school. Yes. Oh. And you moved there uh, midway through high school. You went to I, the Baha'i Temple. Yeah, correct? I, you guys I, moved there for that. Yeah. I, so I, I grew up in suburban Seattle okay. my, most of my life and then uh, moved at 16, did my last two years of high school in New Trier. Interesting. Which, for people who don't know, is a... It's a pretty fancy school. It's a great school. Mm. It's a great school, yes. but it's fancy. Yes. There's like kids getting Porsches on their 16th birthday. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's- uh, It's also massive. It's 4,000 kids. Yeah. Huge Gigantic. theater division. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. But a great arts thing. Yes. I had a radio show at WNTA. Sure. 88.1. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother had a radio show. Yeah. Um, did you do any of the theater stuff then? I did a lot of theater. Did That's you do Lanyap? Or were you more in the, a, the I did drama. some writing on Lanya, but I really went more in the in the drama department. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I did a ton of plays. I was there at the same time as Jim True. Jim True. Okay. He's Jim True Frost. He was in Steppenwolf. And okay. he was on The Wire and yeah, uh, cool. stuff like that. So that's where I got my acting start yep. at New Trier. And I'm so grateful for and, it. And were you thinking of, because when I went through, uh, at least because my group was more, we were really into comedy. So we were all thinking Second City. Right. Where was your head at? So, because that school, everything's taken very seriously. Yeah. So, if you're into theater as a senior, yeah. you're thinking of pursuing this. Yeah. Yeah. So, where was your head? Because I read that you went to then Tisch for grad school. Yeah. Were you all, were you thinking right then, like, I want to be an actor, actor and do the New York acting thing? Well, it's interesting you say that because I've had various points in time in my career where it's like, oh, should I do the improv thing or should yes. I do the serious acting thing? And I, even at New Trier, like, I remember doing some improv with one of the improv groups there. And I was like thinking of moving in that direction, but. I, did, I, I always went more for the serious drama thing, but I I was this nerdy, pimply, uh, skinny Seattle nerd boy, and um, and I had some success with some plays, and I in went Seattle. in Seattle um, or at no, New Trier. At okay, New Trier, once I moved there because I hadn't really done any acting before, and I went to Mrs. Adams, Suzanne Adams. She had probably left by the time yeah, you were there. I think so. Um, and I had you know one of the most important conversations of my life. In all seriousness, I was like. I was so nervous and insecure and 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 uh, self conscious, and I was like, Mrs. Adams, I, I I like acting a lot, and do you think that I could ever be an actor? And she was like, Oh yes, she was very dramatic. She was like, Oh, you should try it, and you should, but you need to read books and go to college and and learn and travel the world and fall in love and, um, but. Her saying that yeah, meant totally. so much to me at being an insecure 17 year old. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, it gave me like, it lit the flame of- if I can maybe actually do this. Yeah, I might be able to, cause I didn't know any artists. I didn't know people that got paid money to Same. to make art. It didn't that, seem like a realistic it, thing. It did you, did, how much of that advice did you take? Did you travel the world? Did you do- A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But, you pers but you then in your head said like, this is a real thing. This is a possibility yeah. of a path. I know, yeah. I know the exact moment because our school was just the new chair in that world. There were a lot of people with money and it felt, and there was like the old money and there was banking and lawyers. And there was a certain thing. A lot of people were going. And if you didn't fit into that, there wasn't a clear, I know exactly what I'm going to do, but there was in order to succeed here, you have to be very competitive. Mm -hmm. So once there was a, this is a real path and it could happen. Yeah. There's, that's why I think there's so many kids from that high school in this town and still working yeah because it was taken as seriously as if you wanted to like go be a lawyer it was kind of more serious in college like my drama classes in high school were better and more intensive than they were a lot of my hey, undergrad where did you college. do your undergrad i did a year at tufts university in boston then yeah. i went to university of washington in seattle and the nutrier was better yeah the uh, nutrier acting classes were just more intensive yes. like and then you went to tish too then i ended up going yeah. did you go to tish i did tish but i did it for dramatic writing oh, i had wow. a moment like you had but it was for writing oh wow where i had a, a teacher the same thing i had a i was really bad in school for a while i dropped out for a year came back yeah. was trying to find my footing and then i had a an english teacher be like you just got to see writings like jazz and you could do it. You just have to do it your way as opposed to trying to write like these other writers. Oh, just nice. make it your voice. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh, did you cool. go straight from Nutrier to, to there? Or I what? went to University of Iowa for a year. OK. Uh, My and, wife went there. Oh, yeah. Iowa City. Really fun. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, to Tish. OK. Yeah. And so you then did the dramatic writing and then went from there to L.A. No, I did, I did a graduate acting okay. program, even though I, I wasn't. Officially 
I didn't have my undergrad degree, but I had done a couple years of undergrad. And so they let me in. And I did cool. theater for 10 years in New York, man. Wow. I, I was doing like way. Shakespeare, bus and truck, oh, off, off Broadway. Acting, acting. I was acting, acting, acting. Because your yeah. career is so fascinating. Because I obviously, you know, I'm a big fan and I've watched you a lot, especially when we were both doing TV. Yeah. Because I feel it's so weird because. We were on like parallel shows yes. around the same time, yes. but we never, never. I think because we're on different networks, we never bumped into each it is, other. Because all some... the Fox people I'd bumped into at some point. Yeah, yeah. But none of your guys as well. Yeah, world. the NBC people, yeah. we all. But how did that, because then also, I was also, I also really liked all your choices that you would do in like hiatuses, mm. where you would do like a big comedy, then you were doing, in, you were moving around a lot while having that job. Yeah. So what was, what were you doing before the office hit? Were you, had the town already kind of christened you in? Or was that it the was, one? It was a crazy story because I I really couldn't get my foot into TV and film in New York at all. I was the only actor. I was in New York for 10 years. Yeah. I didn't even have an audition wow. for any of the Law and Orders. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's the only thing. <laughs> That's the thing. That's, That's the only it. TV. Everybody, every they, New York People will be on it twice. <laughs> and, for, and for people that, yeah, I, multi, I have That's multiple right. friends that were on like three or four different times. Yeah. Just walking know? in a bagel shop going, I don't know what to tell you. I yeah. don't know the guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, he used to come around here. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a yeah, while. Here's his phone number. Relax. The constant <laughs> moving and the device they pick of everybody in New York is constantly walking and talking. Yeah, yeah. you're like, just stop, yeah. settle down. No, just, no, that law and order traffic is real. Literally, two detectives. You're a bagel delivery guy. You have time <laughs> yeah. to stop. I'm always yeah. giving up the info. <laughs> There's always a guy stacking boxes, always. and he yeah. never stops stacking no, these are, boxes. These are yeah. serious it, detectives. It, it, if a detective goes, "Hey, can I talk to you?" I'm We're investigating a murder. I'm not going like well, this. Oh yeah, the murder. You talking about that dead woman down the <laughs> yeah, block? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm That's going. That's one of the main acting <laughs> classes. Yeah. Is movement while memorizing because you always got to be doing some yeah. activity. And it killed me. When yeah. I started. So, so I came hard. to I came to uh, L. A. around year two thousand, and um, I didn't have any TV or film credits really, and uh, I just. I came with this comedy show we created uh, in New York called the New Bozina. That was this kind of sketch comedy clown weird show, and we brought it, and it actually, you know, opened some doors. Where and were we, you doing it? Okay. We did it at little theaters around Hollywood. Okay, wow. not, not far, not far from here. Were you doing it in New York too? We did it in New York. Yeah, we did it off Broadway in New York. Okay, because we were doing at that time like the surf realities and the collective unconsciouses down in the Lower East Side. Okay, so you guys were more off Broadway doing that. Yeah, okay. we were at the Cherry Lane, and Fun. we had done it over some other small theater. Cool. So, did you know the State guys at all? Did you? No, know? they were they were a generation before me. Okay, because I we we were pretty tight with them. We we're around the same time. Cool. So yeah. So then you came out here with a play. But no real link in. Yeah. And then it just, the play we got, we the, our little troupe signed with Three Arts Management. She and made then the same arcs. Yeah, that's made. seriously crazy. Uh, yeah. 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 And I then, did, I did, uh, Eric Edelson and I sold a little thing, mm -hmm. yeah. signed with Three Arts Management. Yeah, then yeah. you got agents. Yep. Then UTA. we got agents. And yeah, yeah. yeah and, uh, and then did a bunch of like guest spots and little yeah. weird films and pilots and, and stuff like that. But and I was how, having, and how I was having way more success in LA than I was in New York. I had the same exact thing. Which and is how crazy. Were, so I had no success in New York. And how were you feeling? Like when you were starting to do, were you feeling the build was happening? Yeah. You did. Okay. So yeah, it, it was every to feel year like, there was a little bit more, yes. I was making a little bit more money and getting a little bit better roles. And then it finally peaked when I got on Six Feet Under. And mm -hmm. I, I got the story. Uh, I love this story, which is they kept bringing me in for six feet under and I kept not getting booked, but for tiny roles, like for like five lines here, three lines there, something like that. And I was like, damn, I really want to be on this show. It's so great. Um, Peter Krause and Michael C. Hall had also gone to NYU. I knew them. I was like, I just want to get on this show. And five times I got rejected. And then the last time I was coming in, I saw this role of Arthur, the, the mortician, and and I read the character description. It was literally sitting on the t table. I saw the character break down and it said like a nerdy, odd mortician who is like Peter Sellers Ugh. and being there. And I was like, oh my God, I could totally play that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I went to the casting person and again, I was like, hey, can I audition for this role? And she was oh, like- Oh, you really did that? Yeah. And, and she was like, oh, let me check. And then uh, she was like, yeah, yeah, come back in an hour and you can audition. And then I booked that. Mm. And that is what 
got me the office and got me a lot. So uh, then the people from the office saw that. Yeah, Greg Daniels from the office no saw me way. in uh, in Six Feet. And had you known the? Uh, were you a big fan of the British Office before? Was I was. That a, yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So it must have been nerve wracking to go in for that role too, because on the British Office, that role is so. I mean, it's Gareth yeah. on the British Office. Yeah, I was. I mean. Obviously, the British office is is a total genius, and we're in forever in debt, of course. But I really was like, there is no one else that can play this role better than me. See, it, that's the mental. If you get to that stage yeah. in this game, yeah, that's you, awesome. You so you were like, I know I could do this guy. Yeah, because you were eating that part. So I because re I remember that era when it came. Did was, you audition I was for it? Ask. I don't remember. I did. You did? Yeah. I, then I probably did you too. You did? Yeah, I did. Okay, oh, yeah. then I did. But too. it was also like it you're was an actor. Big, well, uh, not Hollywood doesn't actor. agree. <laughs> Hollywood doesn't agree. I at some point considered myself that, but it was a big deal. It was like yes. the office was yes. one where everyone was going well, in. Everybody, everyone... well, everybody knew about it. Never yeah. was going. So then, if you auditioned, I did too because it was that year. I didn't remember if we were here for it or yeah i was here uh but i remember there was real uh i remember there was a real fear because i thought as a gambling man it's not gonna work mm -hmm. you can't remake well they that. did a lot of those adaptations they were trying from uk it. hits that they, did, and, and they vice never versa no, yeah, yeah. A lot because, of them, most of them missed but i was like you're coupling hitting and this coupling, yeah. uh uh, uh Kath and Kim, I remember yep, they hit right? hard. Yeah. Huge. There's a bunch of yep, them. Totally. Yeah. NBC too. And then once you guys started and it really was a lot of that with that cast, you were like, Oh, this shit's a monster. Oh yeah. So once it started, then you just took off. Yeah, I mean uh, people don't remember like our first season we got excoriated in the reviews. Mm -hmm. We got bad I don't remember that uh, numbers and uh we really were almost cancelled. Kevin Riley, you know, fought for us. Kevin Riley was the best. And uh, really tried to keep us on the air. And we just got a little, you know, our first season was six episodes. Yeah. We did a pilot, wow. five episodes. Wow. Then we did, um, like, we got picked up for like five more for season two. Oh, yeah, and then like one crazy. more and then like two more. And it wasn't really like halfway through our second season that we... We were off. off. And then at that point, we were like off like a yeah, rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And crazy. then it just didn't stop. Yeah, yeah. But you're also doing, you know, I've been watching you on Instagram and stuff where you're in Antarctica and doing like, you're always making interesting choices. What was the thing when you started, obviously the environments, you know, the environment, but when was the moment that that became, because it seems like it's not only your passion right now, yeah. but creatively, you're also putting it in front, like you're really putting what's going on with the environment front and center with your name, with your passion, with what you do, and you're physically going places. What was that turn or was that always building? Um, I mean, there's a couple of different things. I mean, I, I just feel like, and, and I felt this kind of awesome responsibility when I was on the office, like all of a sudden I have a platform, people care what I think and feel. Don't I have a responsibility to somehow try and make the world a better place besides just being entertaining mm -hmm. and playing goofy characters. And how do I work that? So we started this company, Soul Pancake, that went on for a long time. That was a digital media company, YouTube channel that was making inspiring content. I was started working more and more in philanthropy. My wife and I co-founded with some Haitian friends, a, a, a girls' uh, non education nonprofit in Haiti. And as far as climate, yeah, I mean, I was just like, the only thing I was doing for the climate was sending out occasional angry tweets. <laughs> yeah, and, totally. And then I was like, you got to do more than this rain. Come on. Like, this is, you know, you've got to put your money where your mouth is. Like, like get behind something. And I met this wonderful woman, Dr. Gail Whiteman. She ran this organization called Arctic Base Camp. And she started it and she was like, Let's go to Greenland. Let's film a thing. And we got just a, a shoestring budget. We shot this little show called An Idiot's Guide to Climate Change. And and we've been doing these. I've been working a little bit with Adam McKay and his Yellow Dot Studios and trying to kind of reach people in the movable middle around climate because too much climate is either yelling at people that will never believe the science or uh, preaching to the choir of people who are already, you know, who already it's important. So how do you make accessible, fun, funny content that reaches kids in, in Nebraska that don't know what to think about climate. So, you know, I just, I, I, I just try to, I try to walk the walk a That's little cool, bit. man. And you know. where's your head uh, creatively as an actor in the state of the game and what do you like right now? What do you want to do next? Um, I, I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know what I want to do next. I, I, uh, 
you know, it's a weird I'm, time. What's that? It's a weird time. It is a weird time right now. Everyone says it's kind of like the deadest it's ever been. And like, also, what what is it? Yeah. Well, remember pilots. I mean, we were talking about this the other day. Pilot pilot season as a thing. Like when you when the office was auditioning, like There's you had like thirty auditions, twenty yes. auditions yeah. from January to March, big yeah. ones. Yeah. And then I think last year it was like there were three that actors like were, at, which is just it's just a different. Well, there also used to be a life as an actor. Yeah, you, and used, that you is used to be able being, to nickel and dime your way you, through. Well, it. you could also be a pilot actor. Yeah, mm -hmm. where you could, you could make were, your living for you, ten years totally. just doing pilots. Every you year. could make your yeah. living doing that as a writer. You could make your living, yep. you know, writing pilots almost, and then getting an overall. Or yes. Something. Yeah. Yeah, and so then the game keeps changing. But now that, but also they don't audition as much anymore. No. Like everything is straight, straight offers. Agreed. So there's the, they'll have a pilot. They'll look down the top seven yes. characters on yes. the list, and they'll be like, let's offer this to him, yes. and this to him, and this. But what to also him. sucks about this, because I always like to try to write and make stuff. I like the indie feeling stuff. Yeah. Is everybody you would like? It's a straight offer, and I go like, I'm not looking for you to audition for me, like dance for me, but how about a meeting? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get along. Let's see yeah. if we agree creatively. Yeah. I'm like. It's like the business wants to do arranged marriages. I'm like, can't we date? Yeah. yeah. I'm interested in but maybe I'm, marriage. But I'm also really interested in the old fashioned, like, audition. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. and come into a room. Don't send in a tape. Come yeah, into yeah, a room yeah, yeah. and do the audition and work with the director. And I'm game to do yeah. that. Well, that old world, I do believe, is so the old. Did you guys have to test for the office in that old world where you're like, you tested in person, there were all the executives in a room? How'd you guys do the, your test for that? So show? the office was different than any other pilot test I'd ever done. Because normally you're exactly right. You you waltz in in front of all these executives. So in some scary. Conference room. Yeah, it's awful. It's all this pressure, and you got to try and be funny yes. and be mostly off book. Um, the office they shot the auditions over a weekend um, as a kind of a series of callbacks, mixing and matching. Oh, cool. Uh, mm. The actors. So stuff. It was really chemistry based. And, yeah, and and it was. And we filmed it in the documentary style, so that the oh, that's great. Oh, so the so network could see us the on the screen. That's so, way better. Yeah. I mean, well, that's anything where, where you going. had the yes. chance to actually be a little more natural, because oh. it was so unnatural the other yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. But that had, I mean, that's. Yeah. That is crazy. I know, like you were saying, when you auditioned for New Girl, because yeah. you can hear the person before you. Yes. And you're just like, oh, this sucks. This oh, I have a great, I have a great story Please. about that. It wasn't me, but uh, someone I know, they were auditioning. It was between them and like a big name of a, of a former star, but a little bit past their prime. And it was between the two of them. They go in the waiting room. They bring in the, the star first to the conference room with all the executives. And they, he hears laughter and applause and slaps on the back and ah, oh, and he hears him reading and the, all this ho, 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 ho. And he's like, he gets more and more nervous. He's oh no, this guy's gonna get the part. Oh shit. And then the, the star guy leaves, you know, I, I don't know, you know who it was, Scott Bayo or whatever, sure. leaves and walks out. And then he goes in and he chokes and he's nervous and he's self-conscious and he and he tanks it. And the casting person calls his agent and is like, what the hell? If we the reason we were laughing like that is we had to because he had worked here before. No. And we way. were like, had to like treat him a certain way and, and, yeah. and bond with him. He knew the head of the network. <laughs> we had no intention of casting him. We were, and if you had just, if your client had just walked in and just read the lines the way he did last time, he would have gotten the job. Uh, oh. so that's the worst. That, if there were auditions, that would be a good story to prep yourself yeah. every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there aren't anymore. Yeah. 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 Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. Please. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any of this quality content. Ring, ring. Here to help, go ahead. Oh my God. Damn. Cut.